Welcome back students. Uh, we have been uh, studying polynomials in algebra and for CBSC 10 students in that we are going to see relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial and we have seen what is the zero of a linear polynomial and quadratic polynomial in the previous videos. So in this video what, what are we going to do is the relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial and uh, uh, if this is a linear polynomial, p of x is a linear polynomial, we know that p of x is a linear polynomial because the power of x is 1 and if the coefficient of the leading term is not equal to 0 is a linear polynomial or a polynomial of degree 1 and what is the 0 of this polynomial if you want to find the 0 of the polynomial we have already said that 0 of this polynomial is 0 of p of x is x is equal to minus b by a. So minus b is the coefficient is the constant term. This is nothing but minus constant term constant term divided by coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x. So this is the zero and if we can verify this so if you want to find the zero of this polynomial, what you have to do is you take a x plus b to be zero, a x plus b to be zero. So what you have to do is uh, b may be zero or may not be zero. Only thing is a is not equal to zero. A is not equal to zero. So what do we do is we keep a x as it is. We push b to the other side of the equation using the additive inverse idea. So this is minus b. And since a is not equal to 0, divide, uh, you can divide both sides by a. So by dividing both sides by a, we can we see that x is equal to minus b by a. x is equal to. So divide a, both sides by a. So you will get x is equal to minus b by a. And you can verify. Now p of minus b by a. So you substitute x y. You substitute x is equal to minus b by a here. To substitute x is equal to minus b by a here to see that the value of the polynomial at the point minus b by a is 0. So we substitute x is equal to minus b by a. So what do we get is a times so minus b by a plus b. So what will happen? a a gets cancelled. So we have minus b plus b. So that is equal to 0. So that is the zero of the polynomial. So, so zero of this linear polynomial, zero of this linear polynomial is minus b by a. But what is minus? What is minus b? Minus minus is minus. B is the constant term, and a is the coefficient of x. So, zero is expressed in terms of the coefficients. Zero is expressed in terms of the coefficients. This is for the linear polynomial. In a similar manner, we are going to find the relationship between the zero of a quadratic polynomial and its coefficients. Now we are going to see that. Okay. Okay. And you have to remember uh, the formula for the zero of a linear polynomial because what are we going to do is Sometimes we may factorize a quadratic polynomial into two linear polynomials and we and as we know the formula for uh, uh, to find the zero of a polynomial, linear polynomial, we can easily say the linear uh, zeros of the quadratic polynomial. Now consider a quadratic before uh, getting the actual relation. Now let us consider a polynomial. So let us consider an example so that we can understand. Consider a polynomial. Uh, in fact, a quadratic polynomial. So quadratic polynomial or polynomial of degree 2 in x. Namely, so p of x is equal to uh, 2x square minus 10x 
plus 12. So consider a polynomial. So 2x square minus 10x plus 12. So this is a quadratic polynomial because x square is there with coefficient 2 which is not equal to 0. Okay? Coefficient of x square is not equal to 0. Now when you look at the polynomial, when you look at the polynomial, you see that every coefficient is an even number. Each coefficient is an even number. So you can take two common. You can take two common. So you will be left with what? x square minus 5x plus 6. x square minus 5x plus 6. And if you want to check, you can use the distributive property. 2 times x square is 2x square. 2 times minus 5x is minus 10x. 2 times plus 6 is plus 12. Okay. Now, what do we do is, this is also a quadratic polynomial. Forget about 2, you take this alone. Now, we are going to factorize this, we are going to factorize this. Okay? Using the splitting the middle term. Now, let us see what is that. Two. Now, what is the coefficient of x square? What is the coefficient of x square here? Here it is 1, inside the bracket. So, you multiply these two numbers. So, coefficient of x square multiplied by the constant term. So, let us do it here. So, 1 times 6. So, this is this is what we call it as product. Coefficient of x square times the constant term will give you 6. So, we must get 6. And uh, look at the coefficient of x which is minus 5. Look at the coefficient of x which is minus 5. Okay? Okay. Let us keep it. Now, what are the possible factorizations for uh, 6? What are the possible factors of 6? 6 can be factored into 6 is equal to 1 times 6. You can do that. And the other factorization is, other possible factorization is 2 times 3. And there is no other factorization in uh, real numbers. Okay? Okay. Now, of the two factorization, we have to consider which is correct. By looking at the middle term, middle term will give you the clue. By looking at the middle term, which is minus 5, which is minus 5. And, and the product is plus 6. And the product is plus 6. So, this cannot be, the, this can, this is not possible. This product is not possible because if you want to have plus 6, then both the numbers should be minus 1, minus 6. This is one possibility or this is other, another possibility. When you add these two, what you will get is minus 7. So, this is not possible. When you add these two, you will get plus 7. So, that is also not possible because we have minus 5 in the middle as the coefficient of x. Okay? So, this is this this possibility is washed out. So we, we consider the next two possibility 2 comma 3. Now product is 6 but the sum is minus 5. So let us take 2 comma 3. When you multiply these two we are getting 6 but when we add these two we are getting only plus 5. But when you put both negative signs, when you add when you attach minus sign to both the numbers, when you attach minus sign to the both the numbers, to both the numbers, what do we do is minus 2 times minus 3, what you will get is plus 6. So, product is plus 6, that is okay. But when you add these two, minus 2 minus 3, so what you will get is minus 5. So, this is the factorization that we are looking for. Okay, this is the factorization that we are looking for. So, what, what am I going to do is I am going to write x square, I am going to split this into 2 minus 2x minus 3x so we have splitted this minus 5x into minus 3x minus 2x minus 3x of course you can swap if at all necessary ok this is plus 6 now what do we do is 2 times now from the first to 2 terms what, what is in common x is in common so you can take x minus 2 now you copy down this and paste it here. X minus 2. Okay. You copy down this term and paste it here. Now you ask the question, what should be multiplied 2x to get minus 3x? 
or you ask the question what should be multiplied to minus 2 to get plus 6 so answer is minus 3 and if you want you can check minus 3 times x is minus 3x minus times minus is plus 3 times 2 is 6 so we got the answer now what is in common both the terms x minus 2 is common so x minus 2 is common you can take that term common so what is what are we left with we are left with we are left with x and minus 3 here we are left with x and minus 3 here ok so uh, this is factorized p of x is factored into 3 terms p of x is factored into 3 terms now when you look at this factorization this is a linear polynomial and this is also a linear polynomial and this is a constant polynomial because 2 is non-zero and this is a constant polynomial so when x is when p of x is a quadratic polynomial at the most you can get three factors of which two of them are linear one is constant whenever you factorize a quadratic polynomial at the most you can get three factors of which two of them are linear polynomials and the other one is constant polynomial ok this you have to remember this point is important and and when when this will be zero uh, now what are the zeros by looking at the polynomial itself zeros of p of x are or you can use the formula when you substitute 2 here what will happen 2 minus 2 0 or you can use the formula also minus constant term by coefficient of x x is 1 here minus constant term so minus of minus 2 by 1 so zeros are x is equal to 2 comma x is equal to 3 x is equal to 3 so these are the two zeros and uh, what is the degree of the polynomial here what is the degree of the polynomial quadratic polynomial degree is 2 so it can have at the most two zeros at the most two zeros as we have mentioned in the previous video also there can be polynomial quadratic polynomial without zeros also and there can be quadratic polynomial with exactly one zero which may get repeated and this is an example of a polynomial where it has at the most two zeros and zeros are x is equal to 2 x is equal to 3 see what is the model of the story here whenever we are given a quadratic polynomial we divide that into two linear polynomials and we know how to find the zeros of a linear polynomial which is nothing but minus coefficient minus coefficient constant term by coefficient of x and you can easily find the zeros of these two polynomials this is what we have done now what are we going to see now relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial ok so what is the zero one zero is two the another zero is three now let us take the zeros to be let us take the zeros to be so let alpha be one zero alpha let alpha is equal to two be one zero and beta is equal to 3 is another 0 so these are the two zeros these are the two zeros ok these are the two zeros now you consider this polynomial if you consider this polynomial what will happen if a polynomial has a, a constant factor so you pull it out and then you can compare the zeros ok and then you can compare the zeros or, or you multiply throughout by 2 you can compare with this polynomial if at all necessary so zeros of this sir now what is alpha plus beta which is nothing but sum of the two zeros sum of the two zeros is 5 sum of the two zeros is 5 and uh, alpha times beta alpha times beta product of the zeros is 6 product of the zeros is 6 so when you add these two zeros when you add these two zeros sum so zeros zeros of p of x zeros of p of x are are alpha is equal to 2 beta is equal to 3 
when you add these two what you are getting is 5 when you multiply them what you are getting is 6 now look at the equation carefully look at the equation carefully let us uh, erase this look at the equation carefully so this is the equation polynomial uh, not equation this is the polynomial that we are given okay now what is the what is a here you can you can write general quadratic polynomial a x square plus b x plus c now you, when you compare this what will happen a is 2 a is 2 b is minus 10 b is minus 10 and c is 12 c is 12 now what is the sum of the zeros sum of zeros is alpha plus beta that can be obtained from here using these two using these two sum of the zeros is 5 let us write 5 because we have found out that to be 5 we have found out just now we found out that sum is 5 so alpha plus beta is 5 and that is equal to see by looking at the coefficient conveys information about zeros that's what we are going to infer see what are we going to do is minus 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 of 10 by 2 or or let me write like this minus b by a minus b by a minus b by a that is nothing but minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x square okay but what is uh, what is this what is minus b minus b is uh, b is minus 10 so minus of minus 10 divided by a a is 2 so which is 5 which is 5 that, that this is nothing but this coincide with this so alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a now product of zeros so product of zeros so what is product of zeros product of zeros alpha beta alpha beta is equal to c by a c by a what is c c is constant term constant term by coefficient of x square now what is c for us it is 12 a is 2 which is nothing but 6 and uh, what is our product here what is our product here here the product is 6 so that coincides so these two coincides so from this from this we conclude that from this result we conclude that these two are equal and uh, these two are equal alpha and beta are zeros whereas b and a are coefficients of the polynomial alpha and beta are zeros and c and a are coefficients of polynomials so this is an example where we have verified now we derive this result in detail that is that is what is the result alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a this is the result that we are going to derive alpha times beta is c by a this we have verified now with this example we have verified this we have verified this result with this example verification is not proof now we will try to give a general proof okay okay